It is travel time and Debbie is back with more great tips and ideas for your next family holiday. So we're in Taranaki this week. Yeah, that's right. Very rural Taranaki. In fact, we may have snuck over the boundary to Manawatu, Whanganui. Depending on who you talk to, of course, you'll see what I mean in a moment. But we took a long drive on New Zealand's Forgotten Highway. It is well worth remembering. Take a look. It's all bush-covered hills and deep valleys for quite some time when you're in rural Taranaki. I know what you're thinking, there's nothing here, but trust me, a trip out to one of New Zealand's most remote areas is well worth it. Welcome to Wangamamana, a community where time has paused and vintage cars somehow don't look out of place. It's a step back in, in time coming to Wangamamana, you know, and some of the ladies uh, with you today asked me whether they could get their Wi-Fi or use their phone and, and they don't and can't use either. So that's really a communication thing. It's kind of a unique experience in today's climate. Wangamamana was half-jokingly declared a republic in 1989 to protest new boundary lines that put the community in Manawatu, Whanganui district. Bloss is on customs duty today. Oops, no smiling. Phew, just made it through. Richard has been public in here for three years. So the hotel was originally built in 1902 and then burnt down six years later and was rebuilt 1911. So I think we're custodians, we're not owners. We're only here till we pass it on to the next person. The town's gone through a, a decline until about 2000 and then um, the Republic Committee in its um, entirety has probably slowly built it up and, and restored a lot of it. On the biennial Republic Day, the population swells. This is 2003, the locals welcoming tourists to what's considered the most remote town in New Zealand. Former Aucklander Richard loves the tight-knit community. It used to be um, a thriving town with uh, probably um, a population of somewhere around 500 um, and we now have a population of 16. Our next ride is just down the road or should I say just down the tracks. So what do you do with 142 kilometres of decommissioned railway line? You turn golf carts into a tourist attraction of course. This is where the region's history has become its future. Let me explain. This rail line was completed in 1933. It took 32 years to build, 24 tunnels, 142 kilometres of line and 98 bridges. I don't think it's ever paid for itself, but it was a link, linking Taranaki with, um, with Auckland, really. For 50 years, there was an overnight passenger service from Auckland, and more recently, the line was used for freight. In the late 80s and 90s, heritage steam excursions were regular events. When it was damaged in 2009, the line was mothballed. Three years later, these modified golf cart tours were launched. And I sort of laughed a bit for a while, but then it became practical because, as you can see, the width worked out perfectly. And from that, we, uh, well, we've gone into plastic type of wheels now. Thousands of people go through here, and uh, there's over 6,000 people last year. I've never had a bad complaint yet. Um, as I said before, it's the best office in the place. As far as I'm concerned, everybody wants to be there. Everybody's enjoying themselves and uh, yeah, there's no cell phones, there's no computers and it's back. It's back like how it used to be. We're not just rolling through the countryside, we're part of it. The history remains and all we need our modern gadgets for is to take pictures and make sure we don't forget this forgotten world. That looks like a whole heap of fun. I'd actually love to do that train trip if they did that again from Auckland to Taranaki. I think oh, yeah. it'd be cool. But those converted buggies look like such good fun. Yeah, really great idea. And as you could see there, I was a, I was a bit hands-free, you could see before. But yeah. you don't actually need to steer. I tried to steer off the tracks, but you can't. Oh. So the steering wheel is just there to hold on to. It's literally as easy as push the accelerator, take your foot off the accelerator, stop to stop and that's all there is to it really oh, how easy. cool and yeah. obviously lots of like great scenery did you see lots of farmland to get out in the countryside yeah we did actually we were hosted by discover taranaki and they have a company called conference taranaki which uh, so they specialize in all the conference venues and corporate and tourist half and full day activities so they showed us all the really great venues that are in taranaki one of them was matarata downs where we had a really big wool shed barbecue dinner so it's a 1200 
Red Acre family-run sheep and beef farm about half an hour from New Plymouth and they can tailor what they offer to suit whoever they're getting, whatever type of group they're getting through the doors. So a really great place to host a conference or have company social parties. They teach sheep shearing and clay bird shooting. They have sheep dog demos as well. So it's an absolute working farm and top-notch family to spend time with as well. You see the boys doing the archery there. Great fun. That oh, looks really, really cool. Mm. Oh, the one thing that might put people off a little bit is that Wiggly Windy Road getting into New Plymouth. Yeah. Sometimes that, if you get car sick. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we flew down with Air New Zealand. So we had a really great trip down. Really easy, scenic flight from Auckland. And the staff take all the stress out of getting somewhere. And coming in over that iconic mountain is a fabulous way to start oh, a holiday. Yeah, you get a nice trip. Absolutely beautiful, isn't yeah. it? It's stunning. Hey, Debbie, thank you so much. And if you are planning a, a trip to Taranaki, chat to the great team at Discover Taranaki or take a look at their website for ideas and tips of what to see and what to do and where to go. Thank you so much, Debbie. No worries.